Hello ladies and gentlemen, Yasekzeek here again today to bring you another episode of Indie Crunch, and today we're looking at Evoland. I know I have not so much missed the bandwagon on this one, as I'm on the next coach over, but that is perfectly alright. I'm going to start a new game and show it to you anyways. Evoland is basically a shout-out to all old-school RPGs, and it's kind of a story about the progression of RPGs as well. Although not completely accurate, it is fairly awesome, and I have enjoyed my time with it so far. The unfortunate thing is it's only about three hours long. As you can tell, I'm picking up these chests here and unlocking new parts of the game, like smoother scrolling, um, sound effects in general. I think the next one is music. Muzak, or maybe a sword. Yeah, there we go, got a sword. So basically, it's a simple game. There are only a few controls. Like, there's a menu control, there is an action control, which is spacebar, which I don't actually like because it makes me clack on my spacebar constantly. Um, there are the four directions, the four cardinal directions, of course, and that's about it. So, it's a fairly simple game so far, but it takes you through the entire history of RPG games in general. So now I have music, and as you can tell, it's very simple 8-bit music that I am quite enjoying, actually. And it's much safer to actually think of this as kind of a short story than... more of a short story than it is an actual game, because... It's only three hours long, and that has been a generous estimation from what I've seen. And as a three-hour game, it's not actually all that complex. It's very self-referential, has a lot of references to older RPGs, or to classic RPGs, or to classic RPG makers like Shigeru Miyamoto. I'm pretty sure that's the one they referred to. Octorak, you know, Octorok. You get cards, you have mini-games, and the game changes as you play it, slowly progressing from this crazy 8-bit you see here into a, like a full-color, full 3D RPG from like the 90s, let's say. So it's kind of a cool little history, kind of a cool lesson, and it's a lot of fun to play. Surprisingly enough though, the hardest part of the game is where we currently are, and that's because we have not yet unlocked health bars. So, no matter what we do, we will die in one hit if we get hit. So let's get some... Oh, this is not just another hidden star. Not too interested in all the collectibles. And by the way, from what I've heard, the three-hour estimation was were people beating it with 100% completion. So if you're thorough and kind of backtrack properly, you'll probably beat this in three hours, or maybe four hours. I have heard some people say up to six hours, but for some reason I just kind of doubt that. It doesn't seem like a game that would ever take me six hours. These, um, Octorok ripoffs kind well, not ripoffs, references, I should say, kind of piss me off because they don't move in any given pattern. They just kind of move around, and I can only attack in the cardinal directions, as I was saying before. There we go. Same with the bats. Actually, um, enemy movement patterns in this early game are one of my least favorite parts of the game. So as you can tell, we're currently kind of in an 8-bit RPG type of era. And here we have actually unlocked a story. And if you remember, if you've ever played Final Fantasy 1, stories, they did exist, but getting a scrawl was kind of, um, kind of a luxury. Because sometimes it would be like, you wake up, you're in a town, what do you do next? And for some reason you have all your party members with you and you're like, uh, um... So you wander into the world map and you get destroyed by the first group of monsters because you run, wander into a too high level area. Yeah. There you go. 256 color display. Awesome. Things are looking almost real now, apparently. There we go. Gotta get this guy dead. And I finally got sign panels, so now heroes can read sign panels. The path is reserved for agile heroes only. Now, as you can tell, we don't actually get experience or level up yet. Those are unlocked later on, and I'm not sure how far I'm going to take you into the game. I just wanted to kind of show you what it was, and possibly tell you about it being more of a short story than it is a game before you purchase it, because for the price of $10, a three-hour game isn't really worth it unless you have a lot of nostalgia for this type of thing. And I personally do have a lot of nostalgia for this type of thing, so I am perfectly happy with my, um, t well, I didn't purchase it. Anyways, I'm perfectly happy with it. I should also give this game a tiny bit of credit for having basically the most extensive PR campaign I've ever seen. Almost every YouTuber and their mother have done this game, and as you can see I just died in one hit there. So these are of course that enemy from Zelda, or a reference to them. I forget what they are called because I've never been huge into the Zelda lore, I would just play the games and enjoy killing things. 
there we go. So keep attacking, I should at least get, be able to get one free hit off, and there we go. Path unlocked, killing all monsters will sometimes help you in your quest. And I got myself an inventory, so now if I press tab, you can see that I am... I have a potion, I have my HP, so I have an actual attack bar now, an HP bar. And now I unlock turn-based battle. <laughs> yeah, so kind of a nostalgic throwback. A lot of things are references. A lot of things are basically here to take you to the past to remind you of games you've played before. But it is not, as you might say, a fully fleshed out RPG. Again, more of a story. Now, I don't think I'm going to... Yeah, why not? I'll take you all the way to going into 3D mode, Mode 7. You guys all remember Mode 7 now, don't you? It's actually a very easy game. You can actually grind a bit if you want to get all the secrets and to unlock everything, but it's much more efficient to just rush through the game. There is very little chance that you're going to die. It's actually a very, very easy game. It's more of a game for the sake of being a game. Place names, The Meadow. So we have some enemies hanging out here. I'm going to check around here, make sure there is nothing else that I have missed. Might as well save. You can tell this is just a large area full of nothing, and all I have is the three enemies, so I might as well kill them. Now, I do know how to progress this game, and I'm not going to be talking to everyone. Basically, I just want to show you kind of how the game progresses and where it goes. So maybe 30, 40 minutes of gameplay maximum. Oh, oh, can't attack these guys from the front. Have to remember that. Although sometimes you can cheese them by just doing. Oh, never mind. You turn immediately around. Man, your AI sucks. There we go. One hit, two hit, three hit, two hit. There we go. Chest unlocked. I got the village. That's kind of cool. So now we have a village here, along with the village music, which it didn't tell me I unlocked. So I'm kind of angry about that. You have to tell me I've unlocked everything. Now, I know somewhere in this village there is a treasure chest. There we go. Enter houses. You can now freely invade people's privacies. People's privacy. I unlocked the innkeeper as well, and I might as well stay here for a night to save my progress. Lovely. And of course, as in most RPGs, staying at an inn for the night does give you the option to save, so I will indeed do that. Come on. Where are the NPC? Where is the NPC treasure test? I don't want to be wasting time like this. Let's go in here. Should be able to unlock the shopkeeper now. Shopkeeper, yep. Oh, hopefully. Oh. Um, can't sell swords to children, apparently. Can I leave from here? No, that's just a window. That is a confusing little bit of light. I thought it looked like another door. Yeah, so anyways, just a nostalgic callback to just about every other RPG. Kind of cool. Um, if I go into here... Yeah, there we go. I can head down here and grab myself a secret place and turn into an adult. Lovely. It's all the kids in video games anyways. I agree. So let's move along down here. There's usually secrets if you go off to unexplored areas. And by secrets, I generally mean cards for Double Twin. And to be honest, I have not actually played Double Twin yet. I'm about an hour into this game myself. I'm not sure if Double Twin comes into effect. I'm assuming it is another unlock. Ah, there we go. NPCs. Lovely. Crystal Caves to the North are a dangerous place. It says Kefka lives there. Or did they rename him? Kefka's ghost. Okay, no, it's just his ghost. Lovely. So now I want to go back in here, of course, and... No. A new double twin card. No one in here, though, so I'm going to go back out and head to the shop. It's very important that in this town you pick up... A, a set of armor, and B, what do you have to say to me? Village, please enjoy your stay with us. I will. I will ransack all your houses. So very important that you buy a longsword and copper armor. So there is a tiny bit of grinding involved here. But if you pick up the longsword first, it shouldn't take you too long to get 140 gold for the copper armor. Or even if you want to buy a phoenix down, or possibly a... Uh, what's it called now? Possibly the rare card that they have an offer at the shop. And as you can tell, getting the copper sword actually allows me to kill every enemy in this area in a single hit. So it is not really a grind-tacular game. 
and mostly I'm just doing this by choice and because I knew exactly where to go and where all the secrets were. If you didn't know where to go and where all the secrets were, it's likely that you would already have enough money for all this stuff just by going to the village. 100 gil, and I will have one more battle just in case. And no, never mind, I got 150 there. Most things are worth 50 gil at the beginning of the game, or they call it something else, but I'm calling it gil. G. 50 Gs. They do call it something completely different, though. Grab some copper armor, and time to head out. You're now ready to fight stronger monsters. I don't think this guy would have actually let us leave the town if we did not have the gear, so it's good that that happened. Kind of reminds me of um, Pokemon, where people won't leave, let you leave the town unless you have Pokeballs and or Pokemon. So heading up north to the Crystal Caves, and treasure chest, forced fight, somebody is calling for help. So as you can see, I have a downed ally just down there. And she is actually a healer, and saving her will unlock a couple things for me. It will unlock the ability to name my characters, which I will not do because I don't want to waste your time. And it will unlock a party member for my RPG combat. Um, believe it or not, this will actually switch back and forth between regular combat, re regular combat, and RPG com or and top-down RPG combat. So just like sword swiping combat. Now, you can go all the way left and down, but there are no secrets over there as far as I can tell, so I'm going to avoid it. Let's see. She is going to ask me my name. I'm just going to press done. Finally noticed you're an actual human being. Be you're a human being, apparently. Oh, man, I suck. So, nothing down there. Let's head up north. The dungeons here are very simple, let's say. They don't really provide much in terms of challenge, and apparently she's healed to full health which is kind of nice. And the other thing about her is that she is a healer. Not to mention her healing doesn't take any MP and heals both of us, so... Like I said, it's very it's very hard to actually lose in this game. Again, better to see it as a short story than an actual RPG. Fully fleshed out RPG anyways. She also very rarely hits with her attacks, which is a bit of a pain in the ass, but... You know, you can't always have useful party members in an RPG. Actually, more often than not, you can only have useless party members. A Torque? I have the feeling Torque is a reference to something as well, but I don't know what it is. So the further we move forward, we eventually actually gain the ability to level up in this dungeon, which I want to do sooner than later because there is a boss coming up. The level ups aren't very, um, very... how should I say? They're not very dynamic, like you only get one stat or a set amount of stats and very little else. But eventually you do unlock special moves and other things like that. Let's see. I'm not sure if you... yeah. So basically, if this tickles your nostalgia bone, I recommend it. If not, I still kind of recommend it, but only, only... If you are nostalgic about games like this, if you grew up in this time era or just really like the history of RPGs and RPGs in general, then I recommend waiting for a sale, picking it up. It's 10 bucks at regular, but I don't think it's worth much more than like seven or five. I know it's kind of arbitrary to take away $3 and be like, now it's worth it, but it doesn't change the way I think, so. As in most RPGs, I try to take away, I try to kill monsters as fast as possible instead of chipping away at the big ones, just to lower their total turnly DPS. Turnly DPS. That's definitely a thing that I should actually be saying. So these guys are a bit stronger than usual. They can actually hit pretty hard, which is a bit annoying. But you know, since you have a healer who can heal every turn with absolutely no disadvantages, it doesn't turn into too much of a problem. Oh, there's some treasure down here. Treasure, treasure. Oh, and always the turn-based battle right before the treasure test. Classic RPG. There we go. Get a heal off and attack. Perfect, level three has been acquired and I almost just took off without actually getting this star, which is absolutely useless. Lovely, probably shouldn't have wasted time with that in a video about, well, I was trying to get through as much as possible in a short amount of time. 50 gills and 3 experience. And now I get a life fountain. So this is like the midway dungeon fountain or the before boss fountain. That is kind of oh, an awesome thing in 
old school RPGs, especially Final Fantasy VI I remember it in. A lot of the older Final Fantasies I don't really have memories of. It also is a bit of a pain in the ass that I don't seem to have a back command, like if I choose, if I choose attack, I have to select a target, I have no choice to go back. So let's go down here, find a switch probably, to lower all the- oh yeah, there we go. Dungeon switch it is. I like fighting these mole things because they give me a chance to get back to full health. Haven't tried yet, I don't think we can use magic out of combat. But, maybe I should go check that. Tab is to open the- no. No actual options in the combat menu. Something happened somewhere. Oh, man. Yeah. It was, like I said, a very nostalgic game. Very referential to basically all RPGs I've ever played. Especially the classics. There we go. 29 damage. And I will probably get to Kefka's Ghost and then stop there-ish. Let's see. Got some sort of light crystals. You woke up the Guardians of the Crystal! There we go. Kefka's Ghost. This one looks powerful. It was Crystal's guardian for as many centuries, but it looks like he's been corrupted by some evil power. Most likely the same evil that had attacked my hometown. Sounds like a good plan. Okay, so basically the strategy here is to actually just constantly attack and heal. And if you do this, it's very unlikely that you're going to lose. Unless Kefka's ghost decides to basically focus down your healer, in which case you're probably boned. And that does happen at times like this boss music going on. So like I said, the fights are nothing special. Basically, you're never stuck in the game. Are you unhittable now? Yeah, ethereal. Phantom counter. I probably should have just waded through that, if possible. I'm not sure if the time battle keeps going when I'm paused. Maybe I can defend. No, I can't. No, I don't want to attack. Oh, I screwed up. Oh, well, she did eight damage anyways. Attack. Lovely. Keep healing up or else we will die. But as you can see, my main character is still getting to 100 health like every two turns. It, he's doing perfectly for us, which is alternating his attacks. Um, I guess just use a potion on myself to skip some time. Oh, okay, so apparently it does run out after time. Probably don't want to be hit by the phantom counter there. Might as well attack with her since I can't do much else right now. Lovely. My guess is two more hits from the main character, maybe even one now that I've accidentally attacked with our healer. No, okay. So sometimes this game does have a tendency to drag out, especially when you're fighting one of these bosses you know aren't going to be a challenge. There we go. Life has increased. Lovely. Power of the Crystal has been activated, and now it's time to da -da 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 flip to 3D. 3D mode. And I feel like I can fight the evil which threatens my village. Lovely. But we crossed, but we have crossed the Noria Mines in order to, the Noria Mines. Thanks for helping me. You're my hero. Lovely. Oh, and um, now apparently I don't have any color or anything, so I have to, oh. Yeah, very, very early. 16-bit music, lovely. So this is very, very early 16-bit, as you can tell. And now it's back to um, RPG fashion, so you can see I'm kind of attacking in all directions now. Ah, there we go, life hearts. No longer be killed in one shot. I was wondering if I'd be killed in one shot still. Anyways, as you can tell, the game just keeps evolving. So it gives you six hearts to start, which is pretty generous. And it switches between different RPG modes, goes through basically the whole history, and that's about it. So thank you guys for watching, I hope you enjoyed this episode, and I will see you guys next time. Bye!